voices that I could have to start in my life. The big tree which swept its face and the lines of the past, they were born to run the past. A lot of some men are fair women. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Please read in Psalm 45. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite for our passion for the king. In the book of James. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become the great and first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen. Slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if many are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not doers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. And they think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues but to seek their hearts. Their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, Father, is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unsaved by the word, by the word. The word of the Lord. That is to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked them, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with the five things? He said, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to the human tradition. <laughs> then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me all of you. And understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can define. But the things that come out are what define. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness. Envy, slander, pride, folly, all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. We say our prayers every night. 
We give regularly to charity to the United Fund and to St. Mark's Church. But is our generosity out of habit or is it out of heartfelt condition? I remember when I was at elementary school, every year, all the classes collected donations from the pupils who read cross. And if 100% of the class gave a donation, that class would get a gold star put on the window of the uh, classroom door. One student refused to give a donation. However, several of his classmates offered to give a donation in that student's name so that the class would have 100% participation. But the holdout wouldn't accept the offer. He refused to get to the Red Cross because he believed the Red Cross was guilty of withholding help from racial minorities during that disaster. Sometimes people do helpful things for others, but their motivations are screwed up. That was what Jesus was trying to teach. His father. When the Pharisees saw the plan of Jesus, the failure of the twelve ritually washed their hands before him, Jesus was a guest. He was appalled because the Pharisees were missing the point. The whole practice of that ritual of washing, that ritual exists as a reminder of a hidden meaning behind the action. The ritual of washing was a precursor for them to say their prayers and to give God thanks for the bounty that they were about to receive. The ritual in it and of itself was superfluous. The meaning behind it. Moreover, we all understand that motivation of the Pharisees was not about the efficacy of ritual hand washing, but their motivation was to denigrate Jesus and his message and his ministry. Jesus was then proceeded to take the Pharisees on. By using Hebrew scriptures, he quoted from the prophet Isaiah, who blasted those who hypocritically feigned worship, saying righteous things but living and doing the opposite. But after calling his listeners to gather around him, Jesus even went further and elaborated the problem. He then tells his listeners that hypocrisy, which causes defilement and unrighteousness, does not come from the outside, but is generated internally in the hearts and minds of people. That's an important distinction he made. He made. Why? It's important when people use an excuse that an outsider influence. Their behavior. You might remember years ago, he used to dress in rag and come on as Geraldine. Geraldine would do some unsavory things from time to time. And when confronted with it, she would put her hand on her head and say, No. <laughs> that excuse is absurd. The devil may place temptation in front of him, but it is the individual who must react to that temptation. It is the response to temptation that imperils the soul. There is a hymn in the literary voice of St. Hymna that addresses that point very well. You might know that hymn. Feel not. Let me read a couple of verses that I said. 
Yield not to temptation, but yield to sin. Each victory will help you or some other win. Fight manfully onward. There are passions that you look at to Jesus. Course. Just ask you the Savior to help you to comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to be. Moreover, let us not forget that the only prayer that Jesus gave his disciples and us was the Lord's prayer. And it is in the Lord's Prayer we find these words. And we have found the temptation to deliver us from you. Now that prayer gives you the impression that God leads us in temptation. God does not lead us in temptation, but God does not inhibit temptation from testing us. In the phrase from the Lord's Prayer, we learn that we are not exempt from being tested by Satan. We can call upon the Lord for help and support the influence of the Jesus was totally aware of the power and the influence of temptation. Remember the story of Jesus as he began his ministry right after his baptism by John. He went into isolation and communicated being the being of the Messiah. And three times Satan attempted to corrupt him. First by appealing to his human need for food, then appealing to his ambition. Lastly, healing to Jesus and Jesus. But Satan failed to seduce, seduce Jesus. He failed to turn Jesus to the dark side. Now, the hypocrisy of all around us, we see it every day in our lives, in the lives of celebrities, in politicians, on our jobs, in advertising. And in the church. Celebrities so in especially cheap supermarket tabloids in business. It also needs reading materials that check out my emotions. <laughs> Hypocrisy by politicians is unfortunately considered normal. On our jobs, it is not uncommon for a supervisor to reprimand an underling. For one thing, if you watch that very same supervisor repeat the very same thing he reprimanded others from. Moreover, half truths and outright misrepresentations on the part is far is commonplace in that. Hypocrisy in the church is no one the church. In Jesus' religious community, hypocrisy was one of the major flaws of faith. Jesus will never ready to expose. The hypocrisy. And it was responsible, his exposure of the hypocrisy, it was responsible for the hardening of the hearts. The Pharisees against Jesus. Hypocrisy is usually accompanied with lies. Perhaps the greatest hypocrisy was that of Judas, who betrayed our Lord, not being the Messiah he wanted to be, and the release of sin. Hypocrisy is portrayed in the church in the story from the Acts of the Apostles, where a married couple, Ananias and his 
material. He sold some property and voluntarily gave the proceeds to the church. When the church elder asked if the donation was all profit, don't hurt me, you may buy. He had pocketed some of that money. He needed to buy. Later, the elder asked the donor's wife if the donation given by her husband was everything he had received. And she nodded. She too immediately dropped in. The deceased couple were more interested in appealing, appearing to be more generous benefactors than they really were. They were guilty of acting in a hypocritical manner, wanting to appear great blindness. All generosity and all generous people ought to be aware, not so much about the size of their donation, but they ought to be wary about the spirit in which they make their donation. Is the donation given to the glory of God, or is it given to the glory of the world? Is the donation given to gain people in achieving a noble goal, or is the donation means of control of the organization? These are important questions to be asked by all Christians. Our offering to God ought to be a thank offering. The motivation for a thank offering is that it is a demonstration, a token of appreciation for what God has done for us. God, through His Son, gave His life. For Jesus made himself the sacrificial offering by dying on the cross for the salvation of all the sinners. Although we can never make a sufficient or adequate thank offering for what Jesus did. What does God want from us? God does not want our money. Now, when you hear somebody on television telling you that, you better hold on to But the truth is, God is not interested in our money. He wants our hearts. God understands that down through the ages, human beings have placed greater value on their on things and possessions. God. Money is not the root of all evil, but avarice and selfishness in the human heart is the root of all evil. God wants our hearts. Human generosity ought to come from the heart. Spon and usually it comes spontaneously and generously. Perhaps we ought to consider all huge generosity to be done anonymously. I am convinced that some of the great philanthropists have given money to the buildings just so that they can go to Maine for the trip. Finally, many years ago I attended the stewardship planning meeting. Where there was a discussion of the biblical ties. And a gentleman asked the stewardship convener this question Was the biblical tie of 10% based on net or gross income? <laughs> and just as you laughed, there was laughing. But no one should. 
good stewardship is evidence of mindful time. Good stewardship is a sign of faith in Jesus Christ. That is no bad. That is no bad. Dear Father, Son, Now let us stand and say together the articles of our belief as contained in the night scene. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in the night We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, by light from light, true God from true God, God from God. One being the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came out of heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a part of heaven. And we'll see. For our sakes, he was crucified and not decided. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he was dead. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in his kingdom of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord and Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped for the Lord. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Lord. We acknowledge one baptism of the Lord. It is a sin. The building of the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world is Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all we undertake. That our works be my favor in the sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We also share it. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us remember the same. 
which was your reality. <laughs> and, and make sure we can give us a, a
Father God has Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice for that. If you're offering you get there at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, and first you break yourself out of your blood, then come and help. And one of us, that way is to be quiet and walk back there. But I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no one has to lob the way.
You have expressed an interest, interest in becoming a member of the Daughters of the Order of the Daughters of the King. You are asked to serve a 12 week preparation period during which you will learn about the following two rules of the Order Rule of Prayer and the Rule of Serious. In addition, you are asked to learn about the Order, including its prayer and law. And participate in 12 sessions using the National Study Guide, which will help you to grow in your knowledge of love of God and pray and serve the community. Do you promise to commit yourself to this time of preparation? Okay. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things. Grant you the strength and power to perform you, so that we may accomplish the work he has begun for you. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in this preparation time, we pray that the book will turn to the next day. And that we may be able to take us and to the office of our senior citizens and sons and daughters. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doing, your most gracious favor. Give us your help that all our works be done, continue, and end in you. May the Lord by your holy name. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Amen. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your own image and called us to a new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn and proclaim the glory of this hymn. Goodness and love which would be known to us in creation. The call of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken to the prophets. And above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. And yet, you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error, in the truth. 
out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. In the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he confessed, He said, take me. This is my body which is given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given night, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of the new Therefore, according to his command of the Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, the Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. They may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his love. Guide us with your Son in the sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your Son and daughter, Jesus Christ our Lord. Firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our suffering. By him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done, our earth as it is. Give us this day our day, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. The gifts of God, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. You know, and in your heart, start with it.
us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for leading us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for assuring us of this mystery, that we are living members of the body of your Son, the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have done.